Bros, what's the difference? Niggas said that they all real. Rat niggas, snake niggas, keep it on me, cause they said that they all kill. Bottom line, run it up. Trap niggas, niggas said that they all deal. Streets getting cold, cause my heart still, heart still, heart still. Real niggas, fake niggas, what's the difference? Niggas said that they all real. Rat niggas, snake niggas, keep it on me, cause they said that they all kill. Bottom line, run it up. Trap niggas, niggas said that they all deal. Streets getting cold, cause my heart still. Hard still, hard still. still. Hey, listen, man. That was YNG Cheese, Difference. And that was the song of the week. The song of the week, man. You know, me and Wallow was sitting back, right? And we was like, it's a lot of up-and-coming artists, man, who be in our DMs. And it's a lot of artists that just need a little push, man. So yes. when we do our podcast, let's make a segment called Song of the Week. Song of the Week. To just give an artist that's on the up-and-coming some exposure. You know what I'm saying? That's what so, it's about, man. Getting that exposure, man. That's what it's about, man. So, you know, we like to tap into the and tap into the bottom. You know, so the so most of the songs of the week, if not all of the songs of the week, is going to be a youngin that's coming from the bottom. The bottom. So, um, yeah, man, that was Y and G Cheese. That's a uh, difference. And uh, let's get into our sponsors, Walla. Listen, man, we gonna get straight into it, man. Have you had any good hair lately? Shout out to our sponsor. EverythingDivaGlam.com. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Once again, I you oh, see, stop. you see, you see, I'm listen, I'm letting my soul glow today. Yeah. I'm just I'm just like, listen, man. Yeah. I, I I wanted a little hair well, piece. See, you so take I, the razor to your pup. No, no, no. Yesterday. But it's it's, it's a day old. But I, I came to the realize I was gonna get like a little hookup, the little wave joint. Cause I said I wanted to, you know, the waves. I mean we need to do that. Spinner. I, I I just let it go. I said, man, forget it, man. You let it go. You know, cause you know. It's, I wish I could put a razor to my joint. Your joint looks shining like leather. No, no. Oh. Joint look like a leather jacket. Oh, when you came to see me in jail, you said they tell me, Dad, your hair look like leather. I said, whoa, whoa, man. <laughs> Come on, man. How long you? Cause I do the clipper, so no, I still have a little. No, but I'm just saying, you on a jail sh- visit, act, talking, talking about my head. Your head, your <laughs> head you came like out, leather. Your joint was shining. Your head look like leather. I'm sorry. I didn't know if you thought I brought a bunny with I me. That's when you and Ben came. I said, yo, what type of thing? His head look like leather. I said, Danny, how do you get oil sheen? Real spicy. Come I on, said, man. how do you get all your sheen in the sh- in the cell? That nigga okay. here, he came out, shit was glowing. I said, Damn, you got yeah. oil sheen oh, back there? Was dope, man. Just hey, listen, man. man. This is Million Dollars Worth of Game. Million Dollars Worth of Game. I'm Gilly the King. And I'm Wallow267. And, um, man, we love our followers, man. They keep putting us in the top 10 every week, man. Love y'all. We love we y'all. We love y'all, man. Every way. Every way, man. So every let's get into possible. the first topic. Okay, so it. I was doing some studies over the weekend, right? What type right? of studies? And... Come to find out, seventy-eight percent of men jerk off at least two times a week. I think you're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. What? You're absolutely wrong. I thought I did the studies. You're absolutely wrong. What do you mean? You said two times uh, times a week. I didn't jerk off every day. <laughs> but you different. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not saying. You know, I'm not. You know, like you did twenty years in jail, so you're one with yourself. Man, listen, I got. I escaped day. I went on a date day day. You're a professional monkey squeezer. And listen, I went on a date. I Chicken had, choker. That's when. That's when I was. <laughs> that's when I was in love with Pinky. That's when we had our secret relationship. <laughs> so you mean to tell me you used to you used to have a relationship with girls in the porno magazine? Yeah, oh, Pinky. Yeah, she was my. She was special to me. But she didn't know that. No, she. It was a connection that, uh, like I told you before, it was like I don't have to, I don't have to, de- you know, describe my connection to her. To you. Well, let me ask you a question. So you come home from jail, mm-hmm. twenty years. Mm-hmm. You're in a relationship. Yeah. You still jerk off. Hold up. Before we get to that, I want to back up to what you said. Uh, the numbers you said was off. How? Come on, man. People squeezing off, man. More than you, listen. You're going to squeeze off more than twice a week. I couldn't even imagine just doing it twice a week. So do you, you, you? I came right as soon as I came home. I was three, four a day. I was happy. <laughs> Lord have mercy. You, so, so you, you doing that to your guy like that? Listen, man, you, <laughs> you putting your dick in a headlock like that? Play. I trained mines. <laughs> you trained it. I had to train it for war. Come back. <laughs> you tra- Hold on. So in twenty years, I trained my joint. I was man. Listen, you trained your dick like a dog. <laughs> Come here, scooter. <laughs> listen, man. Listen, man. What the fuck? Are Every you time, listen. I, about? Listen, I ain't even gonna hold you. I, I, I always had the porno book connects in jail. I kept me, I kept me a connect. I was like, I was the line. I kept me a listen. I all the all the lines on porno. Who? Wait. Listen. So hold on. So you saying like like how uh 
Pablo Escobar was the connect on oh, cocaine. Cho- you cho- was the connect on porno magazines. El Smutto. <laughs> like Chapo. <laughs> Man, listen, I knew, boy, listen, listen, I would know, listen, listen. It was dudes. It was dudes. I wouldn't know personally. And somebody might come to me and be like, yo, wow, he just he just let me see the new black video illustrated. Or the new butt man. I said, whoa, he got what? I slide right up and I started just a magical cut. Man, that game was crazy last night, boy. Yeah, I don't even know what game was on, but I know it was a game on. And then they, yeah, man, LeBron tore him up. Yeah, he a bad boy. This that third. Next thing you know, I get in the conversation and I listen, man, and I case him out for like a day. And then I, you know, I crack for the book. Yeah, man, I, you know, I got some. If you ever need some, that's when I go in. If you ever need any books, you like, you like to go on dates? Yeah, I do dates. You know, well, listen, I got a nice collection of women. Uh, so hold on, cause this, I, I, I learn new information every day. In jail, you was known as El Smutto. Yeah, certain certain jails, cause I would get a better. No, connect. That's not a good name to be known at in jail. No, like, no, hold, hold, not El Smutto. You know El Smutto. Don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. We're that's just my, saying. That's my man. Don't do that. Smut don't do that. Up there. Come on, man. Don't do what? that. We're just saying. Because a smut on the street is somebody that gets no, put no, in a no, butt no, naked no. chokehold yeah. and fuck the brakes off of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a smut on the street is a bitch. You put in a butt we naked saying that. for Nelson and you fuck the brakes off her. We're not saying like, that. You I'm was known saying. as El Smut. No, I had Smut magazines, man. I had Smut magazine. I'm going to tell you this. There's no BS. So it was Pablo El Chapo and El Smut. There's no BS. I was so mad, right? Listen, I ain't going to hold you, man. When Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania, took the smut books out of jail, they took already movies for them and smut books. Do you know? I didn't realize, but then I realized I was trying to start a riot about that shit. <laughs> I was pissed. I was hyping. We can't just let them do this. Next, they're going to take our air. If they take the smut books from us, we're not going to be able to breathe next. I was losing my mind. Yeah. I couldn't be- I'm like, what? They was like, yeah, we got to get rid of all books. I'm like, I'm not getting rid of nothing. So let me ask you a question. Is jerking off cheating? I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Because before you say that, because every man that jerks off. In order to cheat, you got to be with somebody else. No, 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 no. It's not cheating. It's not cheating, It's not cheating, So let man. me say this. So every man that jerks off either is looking at another woman or thinking about another woman. No guy ever jerks off and thinks about his woman. The woman that he had sex with 42,000 fucking times. Like, why would you jerk no, 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 off no. thinking about your that's woman? Just, so no, no. every that's guy. That's not going to be qualified as cheating. That's not. That's not. All right. If you're chasing your dreams, you have money in your head, right? All the things you want to buy. You don't have it yet. So you don't have money. You're still broke. Oh, so the fact that. So the fact that. uh, When you jerk off, you be thinking about the old ass golden girls. That's not cheating. Betty White and them bitches. No, I don't think about them. This is 108. <laughs> Who you be thinking about? Let's put you on Front Street. Get your slap when you get home tonight. Who you be thinking about? When My you baby. Jump? You're a lying motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> if you was jerking off thinking about baby. your baby, you'd just wait for your baby to get there. Be here. Be hitting the so let me ask no, you a question. No, no, no. Let me ask you a question. Do April ever be sleeping? You go in the bathroom and handle it? No, I handle it right there. In the bed with her? What? I'm a sheet shaker. You a what? The sheet be shaking. That's <laughs> all you see. Wait, hold up. If she don't wake up? She's a hard sleeper. She sleeps through that? And it, it, and sometimes, and sometimes, you know how she moves, you be like this. <laughs> <laughs> Do one of these shows. Crack your eye. Hey, oh, she's hey so you saying jerking off is not considered cheat. But you gotta understand this. Women jerk off too. And when they jerk off, they don't think about us. They thinking about baby league. Like I'm I like I, I start to think when Tootie, I know Tootie does when I'm not around. Who does she think about? Do you think them women still Do she think about an old boy from back in the day chicken? Do you think them girls pop off to us from our stripper days? What do you think? I don't know. I was inches, so they might get a visual of that dick swinging in that motherfucking tube socking, you know. I was TTD. Uh-huh. I don't know. It's real interesting, but would you get jealous if you found out that your old lady jerked off and thought about another nigga from the past? No, I don't care. You wouldn't care. I don't care. I would be destroyed. I don't care. I would be destroyed. I'd be like, you got that nigga just dick on your mind, even though it's not in your palms, it's not in your presence, Tootie. You have that man dick on your mind. I'm the only dick supposed to be on your mind. 
I'm the only dick that's supposed to be in your spine. You hear me? I would be, I would be hurt. I would be a little jealous. I'm not going to lie. But what happened when Tootie was in jail, though? I think they, I think they took her innocence. They did, they did snatch her innocence. But I will say this though, I but think that was I, a woman, so I can't get too mad about that. I'm gonna go back to this. I think your numbers is off. I think dudes got to cast a check at least once a day. I think, I think two times a week is not going to. Dudes love going to the check cashing place. Well, and getting I, a money order. I, me personally, <laughs> me personally, only time I ever do it is when uh, two act like she don't want to give me none. So what I do is I let her go to sleep. And then I stand up in the bed, I put one leg on this side of her, the other leg on this side of her, and then I hit that motherfucker and drop it on her like bird shit from the sky. <laughs> she be like, the- oh, you know what they call that? That's, you know what they call that, right? What, the, the sprinkler. The sprinkler. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. yeah. called the sprinkler. I hit her with the sprinkler, baby. <laughs> it's called the, AKA, a baby shower. Hey, the baby shower. Hey, hey, so let's go from, let's transition from this to stories from a cell. Story from his cell is deep. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about that. It's crazy you say that, but uh, I had something happen to me. I was violated once in jail. Not, not, not like you saying, I, but I was violated. Uh, I had this, this old dude, and Mr. John in the cell, he was a white guy. Mr. John. Listen, man, old. come on, man. <laughs> come on, man. He was, he was older. Come on, man. All right. That's what they called him. Mr. John used to write books and all this stuff, poetry. So, so They called him Johnson and Johnson. Listen, listen. So, so, so listen, this is the whole thing. It's nighttime, right? And I was I was one of them guys that always be up. Sometime I be up and I just lay there and be looking at the ceiling, <coughs> thinking about life and all that stuff. And fresh off a of jerk off. <laughs> listen, thinking about life, right? So it was this lady working a night shift. Hold on, wait. Was Mr. John your celly? Yeah, he was my celly. You ever jerked off with Johnny in a cell? Listen, listen. Could you listen, oh, all man? Right, all right, I'm just Could listening. Could you listen? I'm listening. I mean, so it was a lady working a night shift. So Every time they come out, they flash a light in your cell as they walking by. And I'm just sitting there looking in the ceiling, looking all dumb, thinking, I can't believe I fucked my life up. I'm saying to myself, because I was just, you know, wanted to be cool in jail like a nut year after year. So I wasn't sure, but I thought the bed was shaking a little bit because the bunk beds was connected. So I'm yeah. like, you know, they got different bunk beds. They got something to stick to the wall and they got something that's connected. So I'm sitting there, right? And I'm like, oh, ah, it's, it's just me. All right, because, you know. So when a lady come out, she's like, oh, my God, what are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. He was shaking the dice on me. Oh, man. He shook the dice. You know not supposed to shake the dice on your cell. You're supposed to wait till your cell is not in the cell. Right. Now, I was pissed off. I didn't tell, I never told nobody about this. Because, you know, dudes usually get fucked up for that. Right. I never told nobody. I'm so like, why oh. you didn't fuck him up? Because, man, I was, I, was in, I was in a different state. Then I was just like, my mom was somewhere else. He was shook focused. your fucking dice I was up. Fo- <laughs> <laughs> no, no, oh, no. Only had no, your butt neck and no, four listen. Nelson. <laughs> you listen, gonna tell me what to shake the dice, listen, nigga. Listen, listen, Everybody, everybody. See, people be front, right? But dudes that was in jail, I lied to you not, because I'm not going to lie. I didn't shook the dice before myself. <laughs> and just like, you know what I mean? It's an art to shaking the dice. Like, like, like it's a, no, straight up. It's an it's a art to Hold shaking up. the dice when you got a celly because you, you, this shit okay, is dangerous. So let's break this down for, for the people who's never been in prison. Apparently, shaking the dice means jerking off with another nigga in the cell with you. Shaking the dice. No, just, no, that's shaking the dice is jerking off and you can be at home and free jerk. It's shaking the dice because it's like you're shaking the dice. Oh, but I'm saying, so what do it call when you, when you jerk off and another man's in the cell? Jerking off? This is called shaking the dice. But I'm just saying, this is what happened. Dude was shaking the dice. That should be called no, 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 no. That should the be whole called thing. crap the fuck out. Like the whole thing is, I'm not going to lie, man. Sally be asleep, right? So your Sally be asleep on the bunk, and you might, it might be just like, because, listen, that listen that jail shit, people be lying. It's, that's a real crazy game, because you might have a, a chick working a block at night, might have a fat ass. Mm. So you might got a case of doors, put the sheet up like you taking the shit. The whole time you watching her walk the tear. Mm. You something hitting lights, you like, God damn. Shake the dice. You shaking them jaws. <laughs> as soon as you hear your celly move over there, you hear the taller. <laughs> In that sense of the sound, if you get a little more aggressive. Because when you hit the jaw, <laughs> and all you hear is <laughs> that's when you <laughs> 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 The uh, toilet flush, uh, right? You got the sheet up, right? And you looking out the joint, or you might have your book there. You might have your, you might have your book. Okay. Because somebody might give you a book, be like, man, I need my book first thing in the morning. Because you got boys that's petty. 
They get they get real petty with their pornography. Yeah, man, I need it, man. Don't touch me. The pages better not come back sticky. Yeah, you ever sent a nigga ever sent you some sticky pages? Yeah, it happened to everybody. And you just ban them. They get banned on the list. Because then, then, then you start telling people in the community. Hold on, wait. Then you start telling people in the community. Community, nigga, that's jail. No, it's, no, the community, the, the the smart book community. It's a community uh, of people that that uh, got that's collectors like comic books. Uh, you're telling me, yeah, yeah, the boy, he's on the list. And you had a list like, yeah, the boy, Mark, he's banned. Came back, what he ripped the page out too. Oh yeah, he's banned for life. And then everybody go to a book. No, I, I get, the police took him. I don't have none. You get banned. So, you know. So, so. I almost got banned one time. So. Because you can't control it. Because you might be looking at it. You might be looking at it. Right here. You be from here. You looking at it, John. You shaking the dice. You from here. And you, yeah. and, 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 you shoot, and you shoot it on the bitch on the magazine. <laughs> you, do, you shoot it. You, you, it's uncontrollable sometimes. Sometimes you can't control it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So. You're Please sell- get down. Okay, okay so you so your celly in the cell with you and you do that, then where do you put the shit at? Would you sprinkle it on the floor? You don't clean it up? You you would you just you could go to sleep with it in your hand, your palm? Like what the fuck? Like no, he don't no, see you, you in the there trying to you clean it. The book? No, I'm talking about the fucking cum. No, you gotta listen. No, listen, listen, me, you gotta have a catch towel. Like every 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 true dice shaker, bro, I can ke- a catch towel. I was a catch towel legend. <laughs> what? I kept a catch towel. <laughs> I fucking catch towel. <laughs> yeah, like a regular towel. You just catch. Listen, 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 listen. If you in a cell, listen. If you sitting on the toilet, right, you will have a towel on your leg, right. So if you got a towel on your leg, you from here. But see, if you got the book here, you got. That's why you gotta have a book on like an angle. But you know what I mean? If you, I'm a shooter, so I, I shoot three points. So it is still hit the book, even if I got it out of an arm's reach. So listen. I'm from here. I'm like this. I had a towel on my leg right here, right? And I just be from here shaking the dice. Seven! <laughs> Seven, come on. Don't blow. Box cars. You see what I'm saying? Shaking the dice down, right? And then sometimes, ah, they get out of control and spray it. And then that's when, that's when you got to activate your cleaning skills. See, true balls, true balls that want to stay in t- that don't want to get banned, from the, get, from the community, from the from jerk the community, off community. You got is is a style of this. It's the, it's the, you got to take the, that tissue and you got to tap the gotta, TLC, the jocks. Listen, you got to jerk ta- off community. Listen, you got to tap and pull when you spray a page because you don't want to mess your name. You got to tap and pull, tap and pull. You got to get you, you got to get your babies up off that page, man. Straight up, you tap and pull, and then once you do, you got to make sure it's dry because if the page is sticky, you're done. All right, so. Apparently, he just broke down how you jerk off in jail. I don't know how many motherfuckers want to learn the exact way to jerk off in jail. That's not some shit. No, nobody want to know that. But dude, no, <laughs> you you'll catch on quick. But, but I guess I guess there's some people across the country who who understand your story and can can share your process with. No, you. a lot of dudes know about. Right, you know, I've never had a catch towel. I don't know what the fuck a catch towel is. Like, yeah, catch. Because the catch towel makes like, clean up easy. I like a uh, uh, bitch. With a catch mouth, catch catch this, catch this motherfucker in your mouth. No, no, catch you know, towel. Yeah. You, you want to you want to drop it on a towel, roll the towel up, towel all sticky and shit. You go to the shower, use the same towel. Like, but listen, you know what's that's crazy? Some other shit. I, don't I ain't been one time. Listen, I ain't been one time. My mom caught me shaking the dice in the crib. This back Jackie? when I yeah, this back when I was young. So I gotta call she Jack come to the back room. Story. She coming to the back room, but I don't hear her because like me, I'm on some goofball stuff. I got the long cord plugged to the TV. I got the earphones on. Ah, ah, oh my god! Oh my god! So I'm in there, shaking the dice. Uh, eight, six, bang! The door popped. Up. I'm like, huh. you know what I mean? Yeah. I had, I had. Listen, listen. Once that happened, I had to reposition the gun. Oh yeah. <laughs> man, what's up? Oh man, put your leg up. Like, mom, what's up? But the Joel was, I forget, the Joel on the screen. And I'm like, oh, man, I got the big dumb earphones on. This back in the day, man. This VHS work. <laughs> So, so Jack caught you in there whacking off, huh? Yeah, she called me shaking the dice. Playing, she probably caught me playing. That's unbelievable, man. Hey, um, so the next segment is who would you be? Now, I'm always asking you this. I, I'm always asking you. I'm always asking you. I mean, no, I'm always asking you, and you always answering. All right, but listen, I already know. Listen, you already know who I want to be now. I'm gonna ask you, who would you be? Would you be? Dennis Rodman, right? No, no, come on, man! Don't, don't disrespect the legend. And and who would you be as a segment that if if you, you died pa- if you died and you came back to life and you have to choose between these people you can't you can't decline it. So you're asking me if I if I passed away and I came back to life and I could come back as Dennis Rodman, Elton John, or Freddie Mercury. Who the fuck is Freddie Mercury? 
I heard of Dennis Rodman and Elton John. That's two spicy motherfuckers, too. It's like, why are you picking spicy motherfuckers? We are the champions, my friend. <laughs> hey, why are you picking spicy motherfuckers with me, man? That's Freddie Mercury from Queen, the legendary rock crew. Who would you be? Was he spicy? I'm not. I don't. Come on, man. Would you be Freddie Mercury? Would you be? Whichever one was the least spiciest chicken tender. That's the one I would be. I don't know. No, you got you to gotta answer. I don't, and roll the Rod- dice, roll the dice. Okay, Dennis, shake, shake, De- Dennis Rodman the wore, wore a goddamn wedding dress. Mm-hmm. Elton John, we already know, you know. What about Lingerie Leonard? Lingerie Leonard, who is that? Oscar De La Hoya? LL. Yeah. Would you be LL? No, uh, uh, yeah, I would be LL. Cool J? No, 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 no. Uh, Lingerie Leonard. Uh, <laughs> no. Would you be him? No, no, Oscar De La Hoya, he... He was running around with the lingerie on with the heels and, and the lipstick on it. That was a wild, freaky night. That had to be kinky. I don't, like, I don't know. That had to be like. <laughs> that was spicy. That was. That was <laughs> right. That was. That was my. Caliente. That was Caliente. <laughs> that was, <laughs> who would you be? I would think I might have to be um, Frankie Mercury because I don't know who that is. So I'll take him. <laughs> Freddie, <laughs> Freddie Mercury. What's his name? <laughs> Freddie Mercury. I think I have to be Freddie Mercury. Who is Freddie Mercury? Spicy, just like you. I knew you were spicy. <laughs> I knew you were spicy. Fred was spicy too. <laughs> Fred was spicy. Uh, I'll be Fred the Goss. <laughs> no, no, you be Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Fuck it, I'm Fred the Goss. <laughs> Listen, hold up. Just Google Freddie Mercury. Google Freddie Mercury death. Freddie Mercury. Yeah, Fre- nah, yeah. I'm scared. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna Google for you so you can see who I'm talking I'm about. I'm fucking Fred from uh from Sanford. Is uh, you don't know who Freddie. <laughs> Fred Nasty is. I don't. I don't want to know who Fred Nasty is. No, but, because um, listen, I'm Fred the Godson, bro. When I show you this, you can be like, oh my god, no, <laughs> no. Before you even get into that, we go into the next segment, man, which is called Million Dollars Worth of Game. Freddie was a legend. Yeah, you know I mean, so let me go into my phone and get some of this game. They say, oh gee, I need some game. I got a lot of potential. And I'm very talented in so many up, things. Oh, picture. no, I'm not Freddie, <laughs> like a Freddie. Mercury. Like a Freddie. No, I'm not. Rest in peace, but I'm not Freddie Mercury. I'm Fred the Godson. <laughs> oh, gee, I need some game. Freddie Flowers. I got a lot of potential, and I'm very talented in so many things. But I hate failure. And for that reason, I don't even try to put myself out there. Everybody around me looks to me for answers, so I don't have anybody to give me that push. I need you to talk that shit and give me the words I need to hear to get this shit started. Well, if you're talented in so many things and you're you're afraid of failure, you're not really talented in anything because you don't give your dreams a a chance or the things that you're talented in a chance to materialize because you're so afraid to fail. See, let me tell you something. Puff worth uh, 600 million. I guarantee he failed. Jay-Z's worth how much? I guarantee he failed. Everybody who's successful in life at some point failed. That's just the bottom line because being successful comes with taking chances. And if you're not willing to take no chances, then that means you're not willing to be great. And to be great, you have to be willing to fail. Even if you don't fail, you have to be willing to fail. So, for you, you just got to stop being scared of, of, of not being successful. You got to attack that shit. You got to blitz life like it's fourth and inches ball on the goal line, man. Because life ain't going to sit around and wait for nobody, man. Let me tell you something, man. Me and Wallow ride around, and sometimes we just see people, and we just be like, damn, man. Life really kicked his ass. He kicked mine, too, for a while. You know, life, life really... Life put a foot to my ass for a long time. Man. Like, man, life foot was so far up my ass, I was sitting on his lap. Right. And to, and to now, you know, we could pull up on people and we look at people and then we say, damn, man, hold on, man, roll the window down, man. Yeah. Yo, man, go $50, man. Life kicking his ass, man. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you ain't never get nobody no fifty dollars. You fucking lying. No, you lying. You ain't never get nobody no fifty dollars. When did you get somebody fifty dollars? You first try to slide all, that shit in. First of all, you ain't never get nobody no fifty dollars. Cause of, when did you get some? I'm with you all the time. When did you get somebody fifty dollars? Why you lying, man? First of all, you seen the five. You didn't see the zero. 
All right. It was five dollars. No, that was you, that was a fifty. You 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 were past no, five dollars, yo. No, you only. You was just arguing with Tootie about giving somebody home no, because, because because no because Tootie. Tootie, why you stopping? No, what are you talking because, about? Because you listen, lying, man. No, because listen. Tootie give every fucking homeless person we see some money. She don't give every homeless person. Yes, she person. do. And it's like, no, Tootie, no, you're no. getting the fuck out of hand. Like, no, she don't. No, she come don't. Come on, like, you, you're supposed to be one and done, But baby. back to what I said, you never gave nobody yes, no $50. I, I, gave, I gave somebody $200 before. You lying like a living room rug. That shit ain't never happened. All right. You lying. You a liar, cuz. Right. 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 No, I just peed. I said, oh, this dude trying to slide some if, stuff if, in. That's, that's not no game. That was a lie. I'm like, this dude lying. If that's what you want to say. Lo, I ain't going to sit here and argue whether I gave a homeless person $5, $50, $200. I gave him something. So for you, I made my fucking memory a little fucked up. All right, baby. That's what rock stars do. Maybe, rock stars do stuff like that. Maybe, You're not a rock star. No, no. I'm you a, a rapper. You're not no rock star. I'm not no rapper. I'm well, an entertainer. Well, you're an entertainer, but it's you're not no difference. rock star. They totally different Don't just people. put me in a raggedy ass rapper lane. Listen, man, you ain't no listen. You ain't no rock star. That's what rock stars do. No, I, listen. the people that I listen, music I listen to, them dudes do stuff like that. That's big stuff. Jump off the jet, you know what I mean? Guitar hanging off the back. I have to go home. This person, come here, take this thousand dollars. That's what rock stars do. So you mean to tell me, in my my whole travels through life, I never gave a homeless person fifty dollars? No, you're lying. All right, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to debate that with you. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you was locked the fuck up for 20 years. So how the fuck you going to tell me I was lying? So, so, so you mean to tell me in them 20 years I was locked up? You gave somebody 50 dollars? Yeah. You was a goddamn liar. You ain't getting nobody no 50 dollars homeless person. Oh here, hi, you're homeless. Here go 50 dollars. All right. Well, at the end of the day, your opinion is your opinion and my opinion. Yeah. Well, is back to opinion. back to the million dollars we began. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you. That's what you like to do. You like yeah, to argue. Whatever. You're argumentative. Yeah, whatever. Just you know, get it. I'm going to let you argue with April, nigga. No, I don't do that. Yeah, because she puts you in check. No, we no, no, no. No, we communicate. That's no. why. Oh, communication. We communicate. We communicate and listen. And and we and we're we're cool with disagreeing sometimes. We're not going to yeah, we agree to disagree. Agree. We understand right, that. We com but communication is the glue to keep relationships together so we're ever to communicate about anything. So we don't have the issue. I don't like debating and arguing. No, I'm just I just had to check you cuz you said you gave a homeless person 50 dollars and I know you're a liar. All right. So that's how that's you all. feel. Well, okay. go ahead. Yeah, okay. So our next segment is we're going to get into why do street cats sometimes, you know, feel like a working cat is lame or or feel like or feel like, you know, they could shoot shots at a guy because he got a regular 9 to 5 and, you know, he not trying to throw rocks at the penitentiary. And I'm gonna keep it all the way real. I've been I've been one of those guys before in the past. You have too. We've both been young and you know, out there, Thundercats on the corner, kicking it. And we know somebody who he got a regular job. Look at you, look at this nigga about to go to work. Look at look at him. And you know, we kinda made fun of him, but but in actuality, all he was doing was trying to stay out of the penitentiary. I, and, you know what I'm saying? I believe that. They do that to justify their whole situation. They try to justify their situation like what they're doing is, oh, look at this guy, man. I mean, a lot of times we, we play the reflection game. You know what I mean? Where we try to deflect, where we try to reflect things off of us, take the attention off of us and put on somebody else. Look at him. He's a nut for doing what he's doing. I'm not for doing what I'm doing. At the end of the day, that's something that we're taught. Is that, you know, it's this education that's going on, this miseducation that's going on in our community, whereas though. Good guys finish last. You're a sucker if you're doing right. Right. Because wrong, wrong was advertised to us as right or wrong. We, uh, we realized that wrong brung us popularity. Wrong brung us attention. So that was advertised as, oh, yo, this was happening. This wrong stuff, this was happening. This is where it's at. So we got our, we got caught all up in a position where it's though our wrong superseded everything. And anything we seen outside of our wrong was nutty. Right. That was like, you. oh, you ain't cool. Everything is based off being cool and the good. Like, if you sit back and think about the dude, like right now, and I tell people all this right now, when you look at this, when you look at all this stuff, when you look at this, you looking at this. Your phone, these mic. We looking at Revenge of the Nerds right now. Them dudes that was laughed at, oh, look at him. He's weird. He's eating lunch by himself. Uh, he's, a, he's a weirdo. Or the dude that was walking by you when you was on the corner had holes in the sneaker, maybe because his family didn't have anything, but he still was going to get his education. You, you posted up on the corner. He's a nut, this, and the third. Them dudes is kicking ass right now. Mm -hmm. They're kicking dudes' ass because if you look at all of them that say, you know what, I'm going to be strong enough to fight through all this. I'm going to be strong enough to embrace who I am, my individualism, and go after my dreams and just stick to this and walk past this corner every day. When you look at them, 
they're kicking everybody's ass. And then look at the dudes that was on the corner. Most of them dead on jail or somewhere in the way. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, and it's like you, it's just this, this miseducation that we got going on to where's though, oh man, he's a sucker. He's going to work. He's a nut. You know what I'm saying? When this dude is, is, is in the long run, he's going to make more money and you'll have a better life than you and anything. But it's not just about money. It's about your life. It's about that physical freedom. So he's always going to be richer than you because the fact that if, if I do a crime and I go to jail for five, ten years, he's out for five, ten years. You know, you know what he's doing with his life? Well, my life is on standstill, but this guy that said to himself, no, man, I ain't, I'm smarter than that. He's out here. He's, he's with his kids. He's with his wife. He's with his family. Right. He's able to get up and go in the refrigerator he wants to. Mm -hmm. he, you know, he ain't got to just wake up one day and the, and the guard hit his door. Strip search. But Spread your cheeks. He ain't got to shake the dice with his celly Call. laying yeah. right there. He ain't got to do none of that. He, boy, he might, but he might be on the, on the street shaking the dice, though. Because <laughs> everybody do that. And the number that you said at the beginning about the dice shakers, nah, 100%. Everybody's shaking the dice. And I think it's more than two times a week. You know, you're talking about three, four. So let me mean? ask you a question. Why... Is it that in the ghetto? He oh he a, such and such a real nigga. He he real he. Why is that all always, always associated with negativity? Oh such and such he he shoot niggas. He's because, a real nigga because Su such and such he got all the bricks in. He's getting money. He's a real nigga because we've been listen the miseducation that took place in the ghetto. What everything and listen like you said everything. They got something to do with real. The way it was, it was delivered to us was this what real is. So if you a kid and you in the house, from our house mm -hmm. to everybody that's a real mother, it, it got something to do with I'm real. It got something to do with checking a person. It got something to do with being tough. Mm -hmm. And we are taught in the ghetto, tough is everything. You got to be tough. Be tough. Be strong. Uh, don't cry. Don't feel. Be, don't be a human. Don't have no emotion. Dis disconnect yourself from your heart and your feelings. Right. That's what you're taught. Right. And, and, and it's taught from the babies all the way up. <laughs> so by the time you realize, you get older, you're like, damn, I never really felt. That's why I, I, I did the piece of the day when I was saying, it's so easy for somebody to shoot somebody because they never even felt. They don't understand that. Right. They don't understand what that pain is. They, they don't understand. You can't even put that in your mind and say, damn, when I shoot this person, I'm going to devastate this. You're not even thinking on that. Your whole thing is, he did something to me. I'm tough. I can't let nobody do something to me. And they might not even did nothing to you violently. Right. Because we have, in the, in, in the ghetto, in the hood, it's to the point now where it's though, disrespect ain't even disrespect these days. Right. A disagreement can turn into disrespect. Like, you can't even disagree with some people. And, and if you're doing it, you got to watch your vocal tone. Right. Because if your vocal tone different, it, the vocal tone in the crowd will change the whole game. Like, for instance, right now, people is dying because of this. People is dying because of this. A lot of times, <coughs> you have people, it might be a situation where me and you might go through a situation. Mm -hmm. Now, the situation escalate with me and you just getting in a regular altercation or a fight or whatever. It might be a regular fight, fist fight. You might get out on me. But it would have been different if you got out on me in the dark. But now you getting out on me in the light when somebody pulled a phone out and record it. And next thing you know, it's on the internet. And now I'm embarrassed and my ego is crushed. I'm all like, oh my God. Now that the ego, the ego... It's something that's vicious. Mm -hmm. That ego is so vicious. Mm -hmm. There's so many men in prison in the grave because of their ego and they mm -hmm. couldn't let it go. And the, and the thought of how I'm going to be looked at. Mm -hmm. See, that is that is everything in the ghetto. How I'm going to be looked at. Mm -hmm. How I'm going to be looked at supersedes everything to where though it makes you live outside of who you really are. Because mm -hmm. now you like, who, how I'm be looked at? Oh, I ain't really got this money, but I'm going to go buy these things so people can look at me a certain way. Right. Oh, how I'm be looked at? This dude, uh, you know, he, he he he. We had a disagreement. He chumped me. He, he embarrassed me in front of anybody. Uh, I can't be looked at like that. He got out on me. He won, so I got to go back and shoot him, or I got to go back and do this, or I got to. Everything is about how I'm going to be perceived by others. Mm -hmm. I don't live my life, right. and that's why I say people are being pimped by people' future perceptions of them. Before you even walk out of your house in the ghetto, you got to make sure you're looking this way. Huh, I got to be tough, or I got to be this, or I got to be this. I got to make look make it look like I got money, or I got this, or I got that. Because how I'm going to be perceived. So before you even step out, people, when you laying in the bed, your mindset is already put on how I'm going to be perceived in the ghetto. I got to be perceived in a good light. Right. I got to be respected. People got to accept me. If they don't accept me, I'm not comfortable with me. So that's where it come down. And the, the miseducation that took place in the ghetto well, fucked us up. One thing we know that, though, is growing up in that ghetto, man, only the strong survive. So I think we got to re redefine strong. Because if you look at it, what we was taught was strong, all the tough shit, all this and 
the people that's outlasting everybody wasn't even operating outside of the law. They wasn't even the people that was a part of the street game. Think about the grandmoms, the moms, the aunts, the all, all the men that said, you know what? I'm going to be stronger than this shit that's taking place on the street. I'm not even going to get involved in that because that's not for me. But, that's real. But 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 another thing, too, a lot of the guys who who took that approach had a mother and a father around. A lot, just, hold on, hold on. Everybody hold on, hold on. didn't have no mother and father. I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But I said a lot of the people, a lot of the guys that I grew up with who took that approach because most of us didn't take that approach. But the one. Well, what is most of us? Hold on, hold on. The ones that I do know that took that approach, they had a good foundation at home. They just, their parents just didn't have money to live somewhere else. See, to me, it's street niggas and it's hood niggas. Now, you got a street nigga because he grew up in the hood and he was active in that area. You got a hood nigga because he just grew up in the hood because his parents didn't have financial to take him anywhere else. So that's where he was confined to. You feel what I'm saying? So you got a lot of guys who they got a good, even though they grew up in the ghetto, they got a good foundation at home. Then you got a guy, then you got guys who I grew up with who he could do whatever he wanted to do at 12 years old because his mom ain't around, his dad ain't around. He lived with his grandma. His grandma, 67 years old. She sleep every night by 6.30, 7 o'clock. He 12 years old. He could stay out at 4 o'clock in the morning if he wanted to. He could decide if he wanted to go to school. He could, he could, get all, he could put the covers over his grandma's head and she would never know when he bullshitting. Because they so far away from, you know what I'm saying? She's 60-something. He 15, 13, 12. So grandma go for anything at that age. Oh, I was here. You went to school today? Yeah, I went to school. Nigga went and hung on the corner all day. See, it's a little different trying to get that over on mom and dad. And you feel what I'm saying? So even though a lot of people grow up in the ghetto, a lot some people had that foundation. It's not where you from. It's where you're going. And if you got a person that to put down a foundation, if you got a solid male figure in your life that when you get out of line, they check you. They 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 correct your mistakes. They they show you and teach you what's right from wrong. A lot of us had to learn what was right from wrong by default. Because I, my dad didn't come around till I was 15. You feel what I'm saying? My mom struggled like a bitch. She worked two jobs. So where was I at? I was out there on that corner, man. I was on Erie Avenue with... We was running around robbing people. Running around robbing wow. niggas, man. And at the end of the day, we was like, what was my motto? You was a booster. Thief. Wallow was... But go, one of the best ever did it. I'm not going to say I, that. I would say that, motherfucker. You want to rob Strawbridge's a fucking day. I, or get, what was it? Was it Strawbridge? Oh, 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 yeah, all right, cool. Nigga got banned from the gallery at like 13 or some 14, some shit like that, right? But me, I'm a little older than low. So my mentality was, no, fuck that. I ain't going to steal no clothes. I'm going to rob this dice game, man. This shit going to take 15 seconds. Lo, you got to go steal clothes, man. You got to bring them bitches home. You got to pop the tags off. Then you got to go sell them. Shit. Nigga, we could rob this nigga right here for his watch. That shit going to take 15 seconds. Feel what I'm saying? So then he transitioned over. Now he's doing armed robberies with me. And in the ghetto, we look at shit like the niggas that's doing negative it's real. It, even I thought like that at one time. He a real and they nigga. not. They not. He a real nigga. That's he, real shit. He, yeah. Only until I got older and went to a 95% white college. Because growing up in the ghetto, you know what you hear every time some go down. Oh, them crackers. Crackers got Walla. You did. Them, them crackers got Johnny. Them crackers fuck what you call it over. The man. And then, then you, then you, I went to a school that was all black. Then I went to a college that was ninety five percent white, and I said, "Yo, 
these motherfuckers are some of the nicest motherfuckers on planet Earth. What the fuck is going I've never let a nigga in the ghetto ask me, do I want to hold a fucking car? What, what do you mean? That is not even a fucking question. Like, you feel me? Then, so then I started looking different. And I started evaluating life different. And I started to realize that real is just you knowing who the fuck you are and being secure with that. It's more real niggas working at Walmart, Target, driving SEPTA buses than it is out here in these streets. Like, you got to be real, and, and, and you're real with your truth and yourself when you say, I'm not going to jeopardize my life, my freedom, or leave my family. That's some real shit. That's as real as it gets. That's some real shit. And to, to switch it up just a little bit, stay there. What's going on is this what we don't look at. By the, the news, the media is over. I'm talking about over-reporting black crime. Right. So you'll sit here and say, oh, everybody in the ghetto was fucking crazy. Everything is going on. But they over-reporting black crime. And right. at the same time, think about it. It's 1.8. How many? One, I'm ballpark figure. How many people in Philly? 1.5, 1. 1. 6, 5, 7 million. Like 59% like is black. Uh-huh. How, what's that percentage break down to? Um, I don't maybe uh eight 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 hundred thousand. Eight hundred thousand. Do you know how many of them eight hundred thousand is really criminals? Majority of eight hundred thousand go to work every day. Right. If you look at your neighborhood, Gil, if we look at the neighborhood, it's probably 15, 25 people in the neighborhood out of a neighborhood of thousands of people that's act that's out operating outside of law. The rest of people going to work doing what they're supposed right. to be doing. But by the over over reporting of the media, the crime of black crime, and you seeing they show something that's so heinous and the way they see it, and it, it play your mind to believe that this is the only thing that's happening with us. No. Right. Black people is out here doing right. Right. A large majority of us is doing right. Right. Did you just have a small little, a small portion of people that's operating outside the law, but it's over, it's over reported, and they had you thinking, oh yeah, this is we we just tripping, and we not. And 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 you know what too, that go the same with religions. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Somebody that could be Muslim or Catholic in the Catholic Church. Right. Somebody could be Muslim, right? Christian. They. They can run a plane into a building. What was? Oh, the Muslims tripping. Damn, it's, it's wait, hold on. He's an individual. In, in in the Quran, it don't say nothing about running a plane into a building. It's cool. Wait, wait. He's an individual that made a choice, but the Muslims is tripping. Oh, ho, ho, the Arabs. The Arabs are crazy. But hold, hold on, hold on. Catholics, hold on. But uh. Somebody that's Catholic could run up into somewhere, shoot everybody up. You never hear the Catholics were tripping. No, that's based down to one individual. Johnny Selecki ran into a place and shot the. But hold, up, up. hold up, hold up, hold up. But but I'm gonna say this. Also, a priest touch a bunch of kids. That's not on all Catholics. And I'm gonna say this. Right. First of all, as if before we even go any more further than in this, in this conversation. You know, all love and respect and at the highest form go out to the family members of the people of any any crimes right. that happen based on religion or ideology, any any crimes of that these any of these kids that was touched, anybody that died in planes or bombings from any religion, our heart go out to everybody, all the family members, all the loved ones, all the communities that these people was from. Right. But I'ma say that. Just because a priest, a priest, that ain't got nothing to do with the Catholic religion. That ain't, right. got, that ain't got nothing to do with the, like, all right, some things might happen to Vatican, they don't got nothing to do with the religion as a whole. You cannot take one person or one or, or several, you can't take hundreds of people out of the billions of people in the world as a part of one religion and say, oh, that, that you can't do that. That's not right. That's not fair. Right. I don't care what you believe in. You believe in what you believe in. You know, I'm not here to judge nobody. That's not my position. I'm not God. Right. At the end of the day, I understand what you're saying. You you put it just like that. Everybody is not just because one person makes something and they from a first, certain race, a certain religion. You cannot put a black a black cloud over everybody for that. Right, and that's you what know. they do. That's what the media do. You know what I mean? And 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 honestly, it it be disgusting. You know what I'm saying? Like every day, every day when you if you watch the news, I don't even watch the news, but the I'm news pretty is sure scary, man. I'm it's pretty like, sure it didn't change. As soon as it come on. A man shot on such and such, such and such. It was heinous, an act of violence, and boom, boom, boom. You're like, damn. Every time you see you, and now you're programming your mind, because every time you look at the news, you're seeing somebody that look like you, and they did this devastating thing, and you're like, right. Because back in the day, they didn't report it like they're reporting it now. Right. Now it's just like, you right. know. It's, it's the news, honestly, 
scare people from the suburbs to death. They think, you go in the hood, you're getting shot. Don't go down there. Yeah, and I had to honestly, being all we honest, I had to stop Toot from acting like that. You feel what I'm saying? Because my son, I'm like, listen, he 19, about to be 20. It's up to us to tell him what to watch out for, who to be around, who not to be around. I can't tell him where to go and where not to go. Because at the end of the day, 20 years old, he's going to do as he wants to do. So you you just got to give him information, and hopefully he grabs on to that information and holds on to it. So when he's in a situation like Doe, no, no, like in Boys in the Hood, when they was about to go put the work in, and the, what, Cuban Gooding Jr., he thinking about it. The closer they getting to putting that work in. Let me out the car. Let me out the car, though. Most motherfuckers be like, oh, he was bitching. You got to respect that. He's a pussy. He was a coward. A lot of people would be like, mm, mm, no, he was intelligent. And that's come from the education that you give your son to be able to make them decisions. That right. come from the education because we live in a world now where not just that, we also got to think about this. The uniform, it's a uniform out here that you could be discriminated against because of this certain uniform. It's that dress that come from our culture, the hip-hop culture. But you could, be, you could listen, you could be any race, and if you got this certain uniform on, the way your clothes is, the way they dress, the, the logos, the way it look, you could be discriminated against, and people could look at you like, and we got to understand, hey, it's regular people that, because when I came home, the dress code changed. The words, though, I didn't know who was in the streets or who was, I, I knew dudes that wound up being cops, and wind up, I realized they cops or they correctional officers, but I didn't know that because of the uniform, the tattoos, the slim fitting clothes. I'm like, damn, what? they was like, yeah, he the boy that's, damn, he work, you work where? I, because I was in jail, so I didn't understand that every, it's a global, every globally, everybody wearing a uniform. Right. But it's people that would see you and just like they'll see this cop, this officer, and look at him like, he's a thug. Keep watching him in the store. You know what I mean? So it's like, we gotta be mindful about that. It's just clothes. Right. But 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 it leads us to believe that that's only connected to violence and it's only connected to the ghetto. It's connected to hip hop, so it's connected to wrong, and that's what's and, in our mind. And you know what's crazy? You're not lying because not too long ago I was with one of my Caucasian friends named Ant, and he kind of like you know Ant is urban. He white, but he yeah. urban, mm -hmm. tattooed up. We walk into a place, man. This white woman was looking at him like he was the scum mm -hmm. of the earth. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm black. She wasn't even looking at me like that. She was looking at him like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, to the point where he noticed it. Like, yo, why are you looking at me like That's that? That's crazy. Like, and, and he's white. And, but it was, like you said, it was the uniform that he had on. You know what I'm saying? He looked like the part. You know what I'm saying? So, or the Magdalene, you know, he, he a good dude. He You know, he work. He, you know what I'm saying? But he got that uniform on. That uniform is that uniform is something. So else, even man. when he walked up into a place, he was getting judged. And that's how it be. That uniform ain't no even joke. more than I was getting judged. So, you know, the bottom line is, man, you gotta you gotta be you gotta be mindful out here. The bottom line is, you know, do you, man? Don't get caught up following after what other people do. Because when you when you when you a follower. Mm -hmm. Guess where they going to lead you to? Yeah. To the grave of the penitentiary? You got to be a leader out here, man. And that's one thing that I always taught my kids since they dropped out the vagina. You never follow after what nobody doing, man. You make your own decisions in life. You know what I'm saying? And, that, and that's the, and that's the uh, game that I be spitting to the youngins that be jumping in my DM. You know, because million dollars worth of game is for everybody. But let's be honest. It's really for the young people. Because most of you old motherfuckers is stuck in y'all ways stuck. already. I'm not trying to change no nigga mind that's 40, that's 35. Because more than likely, 55, more than likely, you already stuck in your ways. But believe it or not, some of the, it, it get through some of them too. It they, do. But that's not my objective. Yeah. If I get through to you and, and it, it touch something in you and I say something that resonate in you and, and it help you in life, that's fine. But I'm talking to these youngins, man. I'm talking to these kids 
who about to make one mistake and change their life forever. Like and I, change their life forever. You know what I'm saying? And you can really speak on the power of one, man. The power of one is this. You got that one, that one decision. It could take you up or it could take you down. There's going to be moments in your life where it's though, you're going to have to make that decision to get out the car, to keep moving and say, you know what, this ain't for me. The most really shit that you could do living in the hood or growing up in an environment where it's heavily crowned, whatever, whatever race you are, the most really shit you could do is say, this ain't for me. This ain't for me. I want better for myself. You know what? This ain't for me. I'm going to gracefully bow out. Leo. I, can't, I can't rock like this. That's the really shit you could do because that could cost you because there's so many people in prison. You'll see six, seven people, five people, four people, or three people doing life for one homicide. Not because everybody killed this person. Because one person shot this person. Somebody was driving. Somebody was in the car. Somebody was there and didn't say nothing. So now it's like everybody. And, you know, you, you know how it go to back to, my baby ain't never hurt nobody. Mm -hmm. Your baby was in the wrong place at the wrong time with the wrong individuals that had the wrong stuff on their mind. So now they got to go to prison for the rest of their life. All right. So we got to be mindful of that. But it's a flip side to that. It's a flip side to when you can make that decision that's going to change your life, the power of one. That one decision is where you're going to say, oh, man, you know what? I'm going to turn it up. I'm going to go hard at my dreams. I'm going to go after it. Back to the million dollar worth of game. Yeah, I know failure is a part of life, but at the end of the day, failure ain't nothing but an experience. That's a learning experience. Right. That's the best teacher. You got that whole thing, and then I'm going to go back to it again. The power of one. If you're out there and you got some shit going on, if you're in the NFL, if you're in the NBA, if you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're a nurse assistant, whatever you are, whatever you're doing in your life, and you know you're going certain places, you can love your friends, but sometimes you got to love your friends from a distance right. because their lifestyle might don't align with yours. Right. You know what I mean? Once again, we had we was talking to a basketball player this week, and he mm -hmm. trying to figure out, like, damn, man, every time my homies come to the city that I'm playing ball and they always do some dumb shit, well, your homies can't come there no more. Right. Like, because they're not respecting everything that you work hard for. Right. You're an NBA star. They, they're not respecting anything you work hard for, homie. So they can't be down in the town that you're in causing all this wreck because that's going to come back on you. They're your friends. They're a reflection of you. Right. And if they're not willing to discipline themselves enough to say, listen, my homie is making millions of dollars. Why is we arguing with the police about smoking weed, about doing this, about doing that? And every time it's a problem with these bulls. Right. So I said, listen, man, you got to let them from home. They might just got to stay home. You might get to get with them when you go home. Or certain events, you might want to go like that. You know what I mean? But they got to understand that you're jeopardizing everything that I work hard for and establish for my family. Right. So you got to be mindful of that about who you and, deal with. And understand when you got to take that approach, <laughs> understand. Don't let nobody feel like, first of all, your life is the most important thing. Yours. So don't, if you got to cut niggas off, don't ever let them feel like, oh, he fronting, oh, he's he, brand new. Oh, he's brand new. Oh, oh no, but I'm just supposed to let you niggas jeopardize Fuck my, life my career. Fuck anything up for me. Because, because you niggas didn't want out of life what I wanted out of life. So now that I'm attain, obtaining everything that I wanted out of life, you think I'm going to let some raggedy ass niggas fuck my life up? Y'all got to go home. Y'all got to go home. And, and back to the power of one. When you make that one decision to be like, you know what? That ain't for me. I'm going to gracefully bow out, like Wilo said. I'm going to go in a different direction. When you go in that different direction, right, watch how your hands fill up. It's going to be so rewarding. Of the niggas who died and went to jail mm -hmm. that was around you. And your life is going to be rewarded. And watch you going to be like this. God damn it. Yep. I would have been in the car with them niggas. Man, all them niggas got shot. God damn. I would have been in that house playing PlayStation when they raided that motherfucker. So at the end of the day, when you say, okay, I'm going to start moving in the positive, watch how the negatives start adding up on your hand. Damn, they locked Johnny up. Damn, yeah, they locked Raheem up. Yeah, Mama got killed. Yeah, I could sit here and name a gang of niggas. At one time, Wallow was on the negative. Damn, Low went to jail. Damn. So, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the end of the day, when you when you make that change and you go for the positive, watch how the negatives start adding up on your hand. Mm -hmm. And watch how you start wiping the sweat off your motherfucking forehead like, God damn, phew, thank God I wasn't with them niggas.
Them niggas just got goddamn Reggie White numbers. Reggie. They don't even play the defensive line. Oh, 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 Reggie White for the Packers or the Eagles? Nigga, both numbers was 92. What the fuck are you talking about? No, but I did, when you said Reggie White, I didn't know if you was talking about what team he played for. I was, I was just, it was interesting to know. All right, man. But bottom line, I'm talking about his number, man. I know I you're talking, talking about his number, but you team. said Reggie White. But I'm saying, like, what team did you have in your mind when you was talking about it? Green Bay or the fucking Eagles. His number was both 90 fucking two. No, but he had a different passion for different teams. Like, he was different. You know what I mean? That's why I just wanted to know, like, who would you think of? Like, I, I'm just asking. Don't, don't, don't mind me. I'm not, because you fucking what I'm saying up. I'm not trying to mess with you saying up, but if you say, if I, if I say Manuke Bowl, right? Well, what team would you? What, okay, hold what, on. What wait, my wait. frame okay, was, hold what, on. what team hold he was talking Hold on. If you say, you should be out here trying to get money longer than Manuke Bowl, what I'm, you think I'm going to say, would he play for the Bullets or the Sixers? What the fuck do they got no, to do No, because with it's an attitude that come with it. And no, Manuke was blocking shots no, on hold the Sixers. Don't tell the me, fucking... But don't tell me the way I can think. I'm just telling you that. I'm trying to figure out what type of, was he, because he was passionate on different teams. And the passion was different. So I don't know if you're talking about when, he, you know what I mean, like Reggie, Reggie White. He went over Green Bay and did his thing. He did his thing at the Eagles. But no, he did his thing at... Well, well, hold on. Why the fuck is we even talking about Reggie White playing, dog? We talking no, about... No, but you said because it was a different passion. So I need to know. I'm trying to figure out what mode was he in. You said Reggie White. So I'm like, damn, what, what mode is he talking about? The Eagles or the Packers? Because Packers, it went down. He was doing so good. I know. I'm just saying. I'm just... I'm asking you. And then... And then you know, sometimes his brain be like, activate retarded mode. Did he just say some crazy no, shit? No, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> that, that don't have nothing to do with I'm, nothing. Listen, all, only thing I'm doing is <laughs> y'all gotta I'm asking you a y'all question. Y'all got to forget. Mm. Yo, see, I blocked that shit. You like, I blocked that shit. You ain't, and I didn't even see it coming. Just, psh, you like that, that No, shit. what's going on? What's going on? You, I, I blocked that shit. You being yeah. around me too much, you, you yeah. notice it. You're but learning you art. That, you saw that, that was though. a defense move. You no, told I'm me. Tell you, I'm keep you it saw that real. move one time. That was not Bruce Lee. That was fucking Bruce Lee. That was that a defensive move. That shit was move. weak as shit. No, 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 no. You're learning the arts. That shit was weak as You've been said, watching oh, me on. practice. Before we, before we end this session, let's talk about something real important that you found out this week. Oh, 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 that ain't that ain't that ain't for here. Yes, don't do is. that shit. Yes, don't do is. that. Don't do that. Listen, Karate don't do Earl that. Don't. used to buy a pussy and you felt it out. <laughs> he used to buy a pussy from crackheads do, too. Don't do and that. You felt it out. Don't do he that. Hurt. Hey, don't hold do on. that shit. Hold on. Don't my, do that. My, don't my do that. Guy. Don't do that. Yeah. Don't put that. Don't, don't come slander. Here with tears in his eyes, Dev. He no, did. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Man, I just found out some disturbing shit. Karate Earl used to. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Crackheads. Back in Earl did, man. You gotta stop disrespecting his name. You said that. Listen, the truth is the truth, though. No comments. We you was like, let's you close was like, it. Don't I never come on, had man. No, you said, I never had no idea. You was 12. How would you know he was buying pussy at 12? But no, stop. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> so Karate Earl like, was out you, here. Won't you let Earl, won't you let Earl rest I'm in peace? I'm just asking the question. Won't you let him rest in peace? Right, I'm going to let him rest in peace. But let me just ask one question. So Karate Earl was out here defending the hood and buying crackhead pussy <laughs> and teaching kids and teaching you Karate, listen, hold on. Listen, Teaching you karate listen, at the listen, neighborhood listen, playground, listen, telling you listen, listen, listen. true warriors listen, don't wear listen, draws. Listen, listen. Keep that. Sh- every listen, every listen, time you listen, come listen. to the park, come. Listen, listen. Every keep, time you come to the listen, park, listen, I'm telling you, come with nothing on your feet, listen, nothing listen, on your listen. chest. Keep that shit off of Earl name. Stop trying to disrespect. You listen, told you trying me. to hurt his name. No, you trying to hurt his name. You trying to disrespect his name out here. Let me tell you, you trying to hurt his rep. We only speak on facts. Keep it off his name, though. We only speak. That was his personal life. He don't want that shit out here. You don't be telling people that. You got people out here that come on, man. Don't do that. You, what you, you speaking about everybody dirty laundry now? Like yeah. you ain't got no skeletons in your, like it ain't Halloween in your closet? I, first of all, first of all, hold on. I, I don't tell nobody you used to cross dress. Do I put that out what? there? Do I put it out there? Fuck is you talking That was your hobby? I don't tell nobody that. Fuck Listen, man, this million dollars worth of game. We're going to close the show on this. I'm Wallow 267. This is Gilly the Kid. And we out of here. Yeah. Million dollars worth of game. We coach it. No, we got out. You think we're going to end it over there? We coach it. Now you don't want your business out there. But you were open. See? You don't want that out there. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. That's just. I'm just saying. That's just. You saying so, stuff on, about so Earl? So you throwing low blows, lying because I told the truth about no, I'm Karate Earl. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Karate Earl used to listen, buy crackhead man. pussy. Now that because he used back to, to you, that Jim. C, C that's okay. Oh, oh, I said we got to listen. Oh, it's right now, right now, right now, we got to you know, right now we got to pay some bills and uh, we're out of here. This million dollars worth of game. I'm Wallow Two Six Seven, and this is R.I.P. Karate Earl. Let's see. Now you made it right. All right, I'm gonna take back what I said. I'm gonna take back what I said. Just I'm gonna take back what I said. Just because a person die, don't mean you don't speak facts on them. 
All right. I'm just saying you you, you cleaned it up. I'm taking back what I said. You, I was wrong. I was wrong. All right. I was wrong. All right. I'm gonna take all right. it back. I'm gonna take it back. I was like, the crawls. I lie. What the fuck are you? Talking no, I just had no because you hurt I, my feelings was hurt because you disrespected Earl. But it's the truth. I'm, I'm just I'm, no. You don't know what Earl was going through. If Earl wanted like crackhead pussy, that's on Earl. Only thing I know, Earl used to meditate and do karate. That's it. And take you to the park and told you true warriors don't wear drawers. Don't have no drawers on under that gi. And when you come back, don't have nothing on your feet, nothing on your chest. <laughs> Listen, I'm ready to slander you again. I'm ready to you again. What else he tell you? Lying. What else he tell you? He didn't say nothing about no drawers. He didn't say nothing about no drawers. Did he tell you? He didn't say nothing about no drawers. At 12 years old, did he take you to the park and tell you, true warriors bad on the raw? He didn't say nothing about no drawers. Did he take you to the park and tell you, true warriors bad on the raw? He didn't quite uniform the words like that, but he was saying that, you know what I mean, you got to have your shirt off and your feet out. Did he battle prostitutes in the raw? Two, two martial artists get two martial artists dick crackheads down in a row. <laughs> done, man. You're slamming Earl, man. I'm just done. I can't take this shit no more. I'm true, done, man. Two martial artists by crackhead pussy. I'm done. This is this is over, man. Million dollars worth of game. Hey, I'm Gilly the King, and I'm Wallow Two Six Seven, and we out of here. It's just like that, right?